Buongiorno. Good morning. It is day 43 of our Via Francigena hey. from Lausanne, Switzerland to Rome. I'm excited about today. Today we are walking from Alta Pasch no, not Alta yeah, uh, Aqua Pedente. Aqua Pedente. To Bolsena. To Bolsena, um, which is a resort town on a lovely lake, one of the largest in Italy. We're taking a rest day tomorrow, our final rest day until Rome. And we are not staying in a pilgrim hostel tonight. We are not. We are staying in a holiday hotel. I don't think we're going to fit in with our grunginess and our backpacks, but I don't really care because they have a swimming pool. Hey, before we leave Aqua Pedenta, we want to show you one more of these flower panels. So when we were in the um, Basilica, you saw these giant murals and they're all actually made for a festival by local villages and they're all made out of dried flowers. Um, I guess it's kind of like the Rose Bowl Parade, but uh, only in artwork form in a Very church. Pretty. So I want to show you one more of those panels before we leave town. On the Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights We are about to uh, deviate from the plan. We're making a change. We're not going to take this turn and uh, get off the SR2. We are actually going to walk the harrowing SR2. So we have several reasons. We walked it yesterday and it was really pretty much fine as far as the traffic went. Well, we're, we've we're kind of gotten used to it. Yeah. It was, the, the thing that wasn't fine was how hot the blacktop was. So it's early in the morning. The blacktop is not going to be a problem right now. Yeah. Also, it's Sunday morning, so we figured the traffic should be lighter uh, than it would certainly be on a weekday going into kind of the rush hour of people trying to get to work. We're hoping, but most importantly, it's going to save us five count them five kilometers on a day that it's going to top at least 96 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's going to get up to 98 today. And I don't know about you, Brian, but I'm in a hurry to get to this pool. I would love to get to the pool. So San Lorenzo Nuovo is two and a half hours by following the VF. We're hoping to make it in two hours or maybe even a little bit less. Say probably an hour, flat. hour 45 is what I'm hoping for because we left early enough that nothing was open. So we have not had any food yet. So breakfast so. in two hours. So on the ammo we go. And I, I really want to know, really want to know If I will ever figure out where the road goes Okay, right, we've got another hiker pro tip for you. So with road walking, we almost always walk against traffic. That way I can make eye contact with the person who's about to murder me. <laughs> but um, there are times that we do walk with traffic, um, especially if we've got blind corners, or like this case where we've got a couple of weird curves in the road. We feel like we can be seen a little bit better on uh, this side of the road, the right side of the road right now. But then once we get around this corner, we'll probably move back to walking against traffic. If I let figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down We made it to Bolsena. I was going to start with Buona Sera. Good, Good evening. evening. <laughs> We've made it to Bolsena, as Michelle said, and Lake Bolsena. 
the largest volcanic lake in Europe. Wow. Was it's... created when two volcanoes collapsed and this is what happened. It's stunning. The more you know. <laughs> it's stunning. <clears throat> there are clouds finally covering up the sun for a minute. So it's actually refreshing out here. I got a nap, so I'm a new woman. I'm trying to upload another video, but the Wi-Fi is pretty sketchy. Yeah, our videos get further and further behind because It's of mostly because the of Wi-Fi, Wi honestly. Yeah. But anyway, we are gonna enjoy an evening on the lake. We're gonna enjoy a rest day tomorrow. We have massages scheduled at 5 p.m. tomorrow, which is a perfect day, way to end a rest day. Before dinner at eight. <laughs> and then our final six day push to Rome. Well, but there might be a couple more surprises between here and Rome, we'll see. I don't know what he's talking about. We'll see. But uh, for now, we're gonna go uh, over to Guido's and get some dinner. Seriously, his name is Guido. Trattoria. Um, because apparently lake perch is a really big thing here. And gnocchi. Sounds like a plan to me. So uh, we're putting you away for now. privacy. on the Via Francigena. We are coming to you from Lake Bolsena. We are walking today from Bolsena to Montefiscione, which is about 17 and a half kilometers. However, we are gonna take a little shortcut. It's gonna get up to 100 degrees today. So we're taking a little shortcut. We got a little late start. There isn't uh, food options really between here and there. And so uh, the place where we were staying had free breakfast, which is always wonderful because we stayed at a nice hotel that we already spent too much money on. So we don't need to spend money on breakfast. But breakfast didn't start till 7.30. Yeah, so we got a little late start, which meant, means we just need to cut a corner where we can. So we're walking on the SS2 today instead of on the VF. Um, it's gonna cut about four kilometers off our walk. Yeah, that helps. It makes up for the time we're starting a little late. But this has been, uh, honestly, an amazing rest day. We stayed in Holiday, Ho Hotel Holiday Su Lago, and um, it's right here on the lake. So we got lakefront views, we had a swimming pool, and um, poolside service for wine. So we didn't have to go far. And right along the street that we're on right now, there are so many little restaurants. So we ate. A great pedestrian um, path. Yeah, and so we ate on the lake last night. And it was just, it's, it was a really nice retreat because we're now in the home stretch. All right, on to Rome, on the Amo. You know your town is old when these are the sycamore trees lining the main street. Oh, I can't even hug them. Are they the holes, maybe? Nope. I love, they're so beautiful. The hair and makeup good now? <laughs> hair and makeup is just fine. Okay. I look so much different now yeah, than I have all other 44 days. <laughs> this is the Basilica of Santa Cristina, which is the festival that's happening this weekend, but this is also more significantly the place where the miracle of Corpus Christi happened. So the story was that there was a priest from somewhere else, another country, who was having doubt that when he did communion, the uh, bread and 
water, the bread and wine, were actually transformed into the body and the blood. So he made a pilgrimage to Rome. On his way back from Rome, he stopped here. He performed mass here as a guest priest. And when he broke the bread at communion, blood poured out of the bread. And there is a relic here. Uh, I didn't see it, but there is a relic here of the cloth that has the blood from the host on it. I didn't see it either. But the following year, the Feast of Corpus Christi was declared. Um, so that's now a, a major Catholic holiday or Catholic feast day. And it's started at this church. Right here. Kind of cool. Where we got our stamp. <laughs> of walking and we have finally officially left Bolsena which means we should very soon be officially entering Montefiscione even though we're still like five or six kilometers away. So the biking VF and the walking VF have met up for a little while and then when they split again we will continue our road detour to save us kilometers. My blood, sweat, and tears right there. What's that sign say then, Michelle? Well, that says we're only 100 kilometers to Rome. It's However, it's lying. It's totally lying because we have, ooh, like 150? Thereabouts. We have more than 100. But I do know this, that if we were to walk this way, which is the walking route, we are how many miles? Two and a half miles. Two and a half miles to our destination. With about 100 um, meters of climbing. If we take the cycling route, we have 75 meters of climbing and... Two and a half kilometers. Two and a half kilometers. So guess which way we're going? This way. Cycling route it is. Andiamo. We are now about 200 kilometers, or I'm sorry, about two kilometers from Montefiscione. And there is the Duomo, one of the largest domes in Italy. what's on that sign right there and right there. started this morning at the other end of that lake. The papal fortress um, of Pope Innocent III was built in 1100s, the 12th century, and uh, it's really quite a fascinating museum. The audio guide helps out a lot. It's in English and it was free with the tour. Uh, there are several museum rooms that explain just fortresses in general and the construction of the Brunel Brunicelli Dome in Florence and the other domes in the region. Um, it goes on a little long, uh, but I think he's kind of reading all the panels in the museum, which there's no English translations for. So that was helpful, and um, it's worth a thought. Five dollars for five euros. adult, five euros for adults. I think it was three fifty for children. Discount and for pilgrims. Some other, no discounts for pilgrims. Um, Yet they talk about pilgrims a lot. But they do have a pilgrim stamp here, the same stamp we got down in the tourist office. And there is a pilgrim tower, yeah. which we are not going to climb today because I it's did not well. find the Pope's wine cellar here. <laughs> so if you would have found wine, you would have climbed? If I had found wine, I would have told the story. Oh, but we can't tell the we story We can't tell yet. the story yet. There are great views. If we would have climbed, we would have had the views, but we're going to have views. We'll have views down below in the garden. The entrance to the Rocca de Papi, or the Pope's Fortress. And here are the Pope's Gardens. We didn't climb the tower, but there it is. And there's the view. 
I feel very good about the view we're getting. I don't think the view would have been any better up those eight flights of stairs. So I can't, can't point. I don't know where we're at. I you point. point. We think Vitrella is... Yep. Viterbo. Oh, Viterbo is where we're heading tomorrow. And that is the town. And then go off to the right. And we think that is our next day, Vitrella. Kind of right about there. Or Vitre Hard to see in the... If uh, I said it wrong, phase. I'm sorry. But those definitely, that's the direction we're heading. And those are our next two towns. And we think from what we've heard from our pilgrim friend that's a couple of days ahead of us, that those are pretty nice walking days. So I'm really excited for some good walking days. Helps the mojo. Now we're heading over to the cathedral or Duomo here in Montefiscone. And uh, this is an outstanding view from right here. Behind the church, down some more stairs, and underneath the sanctuary is the chapel of Saint. So Brian, can we tell the story now? It's not time for the story yet, but we're gonna give you a little hint. This is the tomb of a German bishop who was on his way to Rome for the coronation of Henry V in the year 1111. And he never made it past this town for a very specific reason. Hey, let's go see if we can find a wine cellar. Okay. The story is about this wine. It's called Est Est Est. The legend goes that in the year 1111, a bishop from Germany was traveling to Rome on pilgrimage to meet, uh, to see the coronation of King Henry V as the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, he had sent one of his pages ahead every night to taste the wine in all of the local establishments. And whenever he found white wine that was good enough for his bishop, he would write in chalk on the wall or on the door of the tavern or of the establishment, Est, meaning there is good wine here. So when he got to Montefiscione, he wrote on the tavern wall, Est, 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 meaning the wine was that good. The bishop got here, he never left, died here eventually, as did his page. And uh, that the bishop's tomb was the one we showed you earlier. The page is also buried at a different cathedral in town. And the wine became its own denomination, uh, DOC Protection, in the 1960s. It's pretty good wine, certainly not the best white wine I've ever had. This bottle was $12. We've tried a, a, several varieties. We've been doing research. We've, I think this is about our fourth bottle in the last several days of trying different ones at different places. Um, it's a little sweet. It reminds me a little bit of a Riesling, kind of a semi-dry Riesling. Um, it's good. good. Afternoon on the deck. Yeah. Wine, easy drinking. It's good. Which is not probably, great. The bishop just wanted something easy to drink. <laughs> uh, the wine journals, by the way, all say that the story is far more interesting than the wine. And most of the time it says EST, EST, where this just has the three E's. So that's interesting. So there you go. There's the story. <laughs> I think that means it's dinner time. I think it means it's bedtime. It is definitely the time. Buonasera. Good evening. So, I don't know if you can hear us over these bells. No, let's stop. <clears throat> All right, Five minutes later. The bells have finally chimed down. 
as we were saying five minutes what were ago. We okay, so today's route. Today's um, route. We saved ourselves by walking the SS2 <clears throat> instead of walking the Via Francigena. I understand why the Via Francigena isn't routed that way. However, there's no shoulder at all. Yeah. It is not a recommended route for sure. So I get, I understand that because you wouldn't want a whole bunch of pilgrims walking through there. Um, but it uh, was the bike route. It was the bike route. We are used to, not just because of the Via Francigena, but just the way of our life. We're used to walking against traffic and going with the flow. Um, so I was fine, you were fine. Yeah, it was comfortable. We never really had any like, oh crap moments. I know that people say, oh, Italian drivers. I will tell you, American drivers are way worse. I would agree with that. So that so, saved us about five kilometers of walking but and the it bigger saved thing. us bigger, 300 meters of climbing, it saved us. That's so exciting. would highly recommend that if you're comfortable with the road walking and especially if the weather conditions like the heat today would need you to make a shorter day. If the weather were bad, like raining or storming or dark, oh, I would never, would never walk take on the road. it. No way. So that's number one. Number two, a town like Montefiscione, which is built on the top of a mountain. Well, and then just to go visit the church, you have to go exhausting. up the mountain. How many times have we climbed the hills today? To get to this restaurant, we have climbed this hill four times. The restaurant, it's right here. Because we climbed it once to go to the church came back down. We climbed again to go to the crypt. Came back down, which was just the directions were weird. And then, then we came up again to come to dinner and it wasn't ready yet, so then we came back up again. Well, then we, we thought the pizzeria was open, so we were gonna yeah. just go there, but it wasn't open. So then sitting right here, while we're waiting for the, the, uh, the place Mama and Papa, which by the way, if it's called Mama and Papa, I feel like we definitely need to go. It was great food. All oh, the food was amazing. We decided to just sit here and wait until 7.30 to go to that. Well, across the way here, Brian decided to go into the church, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to sit here. So I'm going to walk into this little church of San Antonio, I think it is. It's what denomination? Uh, it's an Orthodox Catholic church. Beautiful inside. I'm looking around. He's I looking around. I hear a guy comes in and lights a couple of candles. I don't think anything of it. And then I hear a door close. I, by the way, see the man. Sitting right here where she's sitting right now. Locking the door. She locked, he locked me into the church. I think they're playing hide and go seek right behind us. He locked me in the church. So I had to yell in my best Italian, which is pathetic. <laughs> what did you no, yell? No, 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 no. Fortunately, that's the same in English. <laughs> and the I same had to time yell. that that was happening, over here on our route back to the plaza where our hotel is. The police are putting police tape up. So that, that means that we'd have to go up a hill again to go around, to go down, to go to our... Or go down and then come back up to go around. That was just literally not gonna happen. I was going to go right now. Fortunately, I did make the decision to go rescue She rescued Brian me first. rather than talking to the police. Once Brian was rescued, I went to the police in my best Google Translate because that was way too many words of, when can I get back down there? Because I want to eat and I want to go back down there. And he said, I had till 2100. So I was fine. We were fine till. But meanwhile, we've watched another police car come by and tear down the barricade. So, so much <laughs> drama today. Here's the problem. Dinner. So on the Camino Francis, Pilgrim we can get a pilgrim dinner at six o'clock. Four o'clock, five o'clock, anytime you want, you can eat. Not anytime you want. I think Just you can always about. get a dinner by six. We've had maybe one night where we could get a meal, but we, before seven p.m. Seven thirty. Seven 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 thirty. And then at seven thirty they go, like tonight we we could get a drink, but then she said, uh, maybe at seven thirty. The restaurant maybe give opened us like, at seven thirty. Give us like twenty more minutes. But when the restaurant opened at seven thirty, the chef wasn't in the house yet. Maybe give us like twenty minutes? Seriously? I've been waiting till seven thirty. <laughs> So anyway. Meanwhile, you notice these beautiful flowers behind us on the well. Um, there's a festival tomorrow night for Santa Lucia tomorrow. Filippini. Do you want to take a rest day and stay here? No. No, we um, gotta go. But tomorrow is a celebration of Santa Lucia Filippini. It's the 300 year anniversary since she has been um, turned into a saint. And the festival is, today's Tuesday, the festival is actually on Thursday. 
but of course that means it starts at midnight tomorrow night so they're setting up that's why the barricade was up they're putting flowers on all of the fountains and it looks beautiful but another festival that we're missing somehow we have missed every no, single festival you got except all. for Monteregioni, which is what i'm editing right now so that's the festival we've gotten to however i'm hoping that if we look up Rome, the places that we're, we're going to be a tourist that we're gonna find some other places so you know for now i think that it's past our bedtime it's 8 30. it's 8 30. we gotta get to it's sleep it's bedtime we've got to walk tomorrow and we're gonna see thermal baths tomorrow hopefully we'll get to get in hopefully so. get to get in one you're not gonna see that you'll see you'll see the bath but you will not see either of us sorry the tan lines are too atrocious you'll see something good night yeah.